The making of the film was indeed a fabulous experience all around, yes. Um, I mean, I got invited to a party that was already great, so being invited to the party was the exciting part, you know, especially when you know you get to see characters that you, you're you already in love with, and then you get you know you get to play with them. That's That was the joy. Um, but then on top of it, you know, discovering the the costumes and the brilliant wigs and like everything that made us into the characters and seeing and you know being on these incredible sets or walking through Monrelasia and feeling like wow I really am in a fairy tale was so so fun. The making of Disenchanted was an absolute I hate to say dream come true but it sounds so cliche, but it really was. We were really fortunate to be in a beautiful place, Ireland, with such welcoming people. Um, we had an amazing story to tell, and we had such um, skilled and inspired craftspeople working with us. I could just keep go on about the costumes, about the sets, like Maya said, um, our cast, the music. Um, there was just so much to get invested in, and to do it in a place that really felt so magical was, was a real treat. I'm gonna have to agree with Amy that the making of this film was a dream come true, as cliche as it is. It definitely changed my life. Um, to be able to step into this world that was already so established, I mean, the enchanted universe almost, was just so fun. Like, we really got to play. Like, every day just brought a new challenge, a new game almost, a new something to make larger than life, and I think just getting to work with this group of people that was so passionate and so invested and so excited. Every, the cast, the crew, the entire team, you know, was just excited to be there. And I think that changes the entire experience when everyone is just so invested and so almost in love with the project. Yeah. You know, yeah. it was magical. Yeah. Producing this film was um, a very unique experience for me because I've produced other things but never something that I was involved with 10 years previous or as it was 11 or something so I had such a deep understanding of the characters and sort of where I saw their journey so it was wonderful to get to contribute to where Giselle might be and what she might be feeling and what is her evolution so um, that was something that um, I was grateful to be sort of on the um, at the starting line with, because I really got to help um, build Giselle and this world that we create in Disenchanted. Then also got to be a part of bringing wonderful talent together, Maya and Gabby, um, and uh, Jema and Yvette, just really getting to be a part of putting a fabulous team together. That was a real gift and a real privilege for me. Hmm. I think the funniest part about playing a fairy tale character and a real world character is because, or no, sorry. Um, I think the funniest part about playing a character that is in the fairy tale world and is also in the real world, I think is almost the opposite of their demeanors. You know, mm -hmm. my character Morgan, we see how funny and sarcastic and kind of teenager, you know, she's got the eye rolls, she's got yeah. the sarcasm, and then all of a sudden she comes flying down the stairs one day and she is this twittering, chirpy, yeah. mini Giselle. She's the ingenue. Exactly. Yeah. And I think it's, Morgan never necessarily saw herself as that role in the story, mm -hmm. and I think it's so interesting to step into completely different shoes while also having the essence of who you are inside, and I think mm -hmm. it kind of gets to tell the story that not all ingenue princesses are necessarily the same, you know, it's not Absolutely. always the same chasing after the prince exactly. or the princesses can save the day, yeah. you know? Absolutely. Well, I knew that um, the fairy tale version of Mal Malvina could only go even further in its arch sort of 
insanity of being awful, like pushing it to the limit. And that was really fun. And also really fun knowing that there was there was a place to go even further was the excitement when we were playing the real world version. But for, for me, Malvina's real world version is so far from a real human being anyway that um, it was exciting to know that you could lay the groundwork mm -hmm. in the real world knowing that it was going to get far more exaggerated and mm -hmm. and that was the fun too of learning when when we would find out what we were going to be wearing and what we would look would look like you know you start here to end here and all of that was so such a fun game to be yeah. part of you know um well, playing Giselle has always been sort of a tightrope walk because we're playing someone who has to be really believable and earnest and getting to play her with this sort of duplicity is really wonderful because again, we're playing on an archetype, but we're able to, you know, we have such great resources and all of the previous Disney films that have been laid out before us, how um, it's almost like a, a, a map of archetypes and you can choose different qualities and characteristics from all of them. So Giselle's sort of an amalgamation of a lot of different uh, princesses and as she turns she becomes this mix of different villains so it's wonderful to be able to dive into that um, lexicon of Disney mm -hmm. uh, classics and sort of find inspiration and that's something I've always really enjoyed is kind of sort of taking little pieces from from different characters mm -hmm. um, through history and getting that's what's so fun about Enchanted is it sort of has its own rule set and it's really fun because it's almost like no rules and it's, yeah. it's so freeing. Yeah. It's like a toolbox. It is, box. yeah. Yeah, my audition for this, it was all done over Zoom. Mm -hmm. I met Amy over Zoom. We read together um, a few times. Mm -hmm. And for my last, what I thought was audition, I was told I had to come back in and read one more time. I sat down on Zoom and our director, Adam, he said, Oh, there's just been a few script changes. We want to send you the new material. Um, I'm just going to put it in your chat for you and I'll send you the new lines. And I'm freaking out. I'm like, I have to cold read new lines right oh now with God. Amy Adams so on mean. Zoom. <laughs> and I open up the chat window and he's like, are you reading? I said, yeah. He just sends, congrats, you're Morgan. No words, yeah, no really cool. words. You know, just to be able to hear that news too. Like, how often do you get the chance? You to handled hear it, it like everything. You handled it with such grace and dignity. Thank you. I'm glad somebody wasn't there when they told me I was going to be playing Giselle because <laughs> that was not that. Did you graceful. just did you just rip the curtains off the walls? Of I was walking. To, honestly, are you guys okay? Well, can yes, we digress? Yes. I was in um, Birmingham, Alabama, shooting Talladega Nights. Oh. And I remember I was walking down the street, I got a call, and I'm just walking down the street in front of myself, and they said, you got Giselle. And I think I started hopping down like a oh. bunny by myself in downtown Birmingham. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I had to keep it together. Not to make it about me, but. No, you guys were watching. I was like, uh, you were so gonna, graceful. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna cry, I'm gonna cry, you I'm crying. You were fantastic. You know? were you <laughs> cry? I'm not gonna cry, I'm crying. Uh, yeah, and there's uh, oh. As you should. We were so lucky to have her. We are so lucky I'm to have so her. lucky to join you guys. Hey, I'm just lucky to be here. <laughs> what was it like returning to Robert? It was, um, yeah, once I started, you know, just being in Amy's presence, I mean, a lot of stuff took place virtually because of COVID and the lack of, at that time, the vaccinations were just starting to roll out. We shot a lot of the, we shot all of the movie basically in in Ireland, so we were doing things remotely. So when we finally got together, uh, it just it just fell into place quite naturally, and it was really fun. We we're like, wow, I can't believe we're here, you know, again, 15 years later, and it didn't feel like 15 years to be honest with you. In many ways, it felt much longer, and it just felt like the other day. Was, that was interesting. Robert's been pretty much doing the same thing, which is, you know, he's a divorce lawyer, so he's been dealing with that. Uh, and he was, he's looking for a little bit more meaning in his life and uh, a little bit more of a challenge. And that's sort of at the beginning of the movie, this is what he's been questioning. And of course, uh, Giselle is feeling that and asking him, is he happy? And that opens up a whole door to where the, the journey goes.
the fairy tale um, character was so much fun to play and get away from the real world robert and to kind of break into you know james's world which was really fun and i found it really liberating and exciting and you know you just have to commit to something like that and see what happens and i trusted adam so i you know it's like we'll try every, anything he wants to do it was the best part because is i had never done anything like that so working with the voice coach on, on learning the, the 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 song and hitting the right notes and the vocal warm-ups in that process and of course i was locked down for 14 days in northern ireland and that was a great opportunity to to train so there wasn't a lot to look forward to other than walks in the nature which were absolutely beautiful up there along the countryside and then uh working on the on the song was great fun Oh, Nancy's been living the life. She's the queen of Andalusia. She's been living in the fairy tale world with her gorgeous husband, King Edward. They sing all day long. They frolic. They have friends, little creatures in the woodlands. The little mice make her dresses. Um, at worst, you know, Edward's fighting off an ogre, and um, then they come to dinner and they talk about their day. And just life is just wonderful up in Andalusia. <laughs> Um, I didn't just slip back into character because Nancy's so different in this movie, you know. Returning was just, um, it was just a pleasure. It was so much fun to revisit the character, to reunite with the cast after so much time. Um, we all had uh, incredible, uh, we had so much fun together. And um, what was fun about revisiting Nancy was just that in the first movie, she was sort of the cynical New York girl. And um, now I had to figure out how much of that cynicism and that kind of tough, broad New York City girl was still in her when um, she's been living in this fairy tale world for so long. And sort of finding that balance and seeing how her clothes and her corsets <laughs> inform the way that she acts and um, has her speech changed? Does she still have a little New York accent? <laughs> or does she clean it up for her, uh, you know, um, Andalusian friends? Oh, it's, it's when Stephen Schwartz and Alan Menken write you a song. It's 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 just incredible. And um, you know, Stephen Schwartz has been like my wizard behind the curtain for many years, having written the music to Wicked as well. And so it's such um, it's an honor when they write you music. It's it's a relief because they know my voice so well and they write uh, for me and for my strengths. Um, it was also really cool because uh, because we were in the middle of the pandemic, um, we were shut down and they started to get creative with how you could record in your own home. And they sent this sort of James Bond suitcase that you opened up and had all these electronics and a microphone and a way to record. And I went into my, my walk-in closet, which was good because the sound is padded in there and good for recording. And I hung the lyrics to Love Power on a pants hanger, you know, with the clips. And I read the lyrics and I had the mic and I sang um, my vocal, which is still there today. <laughs> I think the original film was so smart and witty and clever. And it embraced all the things about Disney movies that we love, um, but it also kind of, without making fun of it, it, it winked at it. It was also, I think, just Amy Adams. Um, I don't think anyone else could have played Giselle the way she did because she's such a brilliant actress. She was able to bring all of these levels and dynamics to this woman that, um, I don't think we've ever seen that before. Someone that has to bring an animated character to live action in real life. Um, so I think, um, Amy was uh, the secret sauce there. How familiar was I with Enchanted? We watched Enchanted when it came out, and we thought it was so good and so funny. I love the concept. Amy's in it, so right there, she did such a wonderful job, and I, 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 I love that. I love. It. First of all, I'll watch anything that takes place in New York City. So right there, they have me. That plus Amy, done. My character was fun to play because he uh, he's like he he he's a snitch and he loves gossip and so he feeds Maya Rudolph's character information so he she, he's like her right hand man kind of like a lackey more than right hand man. When it switches into the magical kingdom, he becomes the magic mirror, which is an iconic thing. So it was great. The barista <laughs> is he loves gossip. 
he's very chit chatty and and he loves coffee all things that i love adam shackman's the perfect director for disenchanted because he's really 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 good friends with ann fletcher and that's good enough for me uh adam uh is uh, vivacious he's smart he has a lot of energy and he loves and knows choreography so these movies you need to wear those bo both those hats well in the story giselle and robert have been living as husband and wife for 10 years morgan has grown up and is a senior in high school and giselle is they're all at a little bit of like um in in crisis um Robert needs a change. Um, Giselle doesn't really know who she is anymore and she can't figure out why she can't fix anything with just singing a song. And she doesn't know why Morgan is cranky all the time. Um, she doesn't understand the concept of a teenager. And so they decide to move to the suburbs because a lot of people, when they need a big change, they try to fix it by moving. But wherever you go, there you are. And Morgan is very cranky about being uh, pulled away from her friends. And it's just not what they thought it was going to be. Um, when we were developing the script, I already had um, ideas for where I thought the songs could go because I am a musical theater nerd and I have thoughts like that. And um, when we approached Alan and Steven, it turned out that they had the same thoughts. We were all aligned about where the songs could go because they seemed pretty obvious in the story. And so then it just became a matter of finding the tonal reference because that's all that en Enchanted and Disenchanted are. It's it's all like self-aware and referencing other Disney work, um, other fairy tale work. And so like, what song is this gonna be like? And what song is that one gonna be like? And, you know, trying to make Alan and Steven look at their own body of work and say like, yeah, you need to copy that, but in a new and different enchanted way and do that was actually a kick. And so, believe me, there was a lot of conversation about each song before, during, and after it was created. Um, I'm so excited about Patrick and Adina getting to sing. But obviously, for Patrick, it's just because, like, this is just, like, a cool moment for him where he was asked to do something that was so outside of his comfort zone. And to see him actually get up to speed and do it and take it on with so much gusto was pretty, pretty great. But then, like, letting Adina unleash that magical cornerstone now of Disney voice um, in this movie, in both animation and live action, was everything. It was absolutely everything. And there was going to be no version of this that would happen without Adina singing. Amy and I were like, yeah, that ain't gonna happen. Like, she's gonna sing. Filming Batter was one of the great times that I had on this. Now, you know, it's divided into little chunks. And so it's like, it's not like I shot the entire song ever in one, one thing, but like the scene where they are together in the uh, sort of royal coffee house, as it were, um, is being on set for that was uh, basically what I say is like, I just set the table and they ate everything. <laughs> it was just heaven. It was a blast. They were having a blast. I was having a blast. It felt special. I don't know. It was just a great time. <laughs> well, Robert has been busy with his law practice, and he's obviously a very big family lawyer and, you know, very, very busy all the time. So he's been quite caught up with that. But I think he's done a very good job raising his daughter, Morgan. He's very close with her. And now, you know, Robert, and Giselle are expecting a baby. So we get to see what it's like for Giselle to be a new mom uh, and also raising a teenage daughter. And what happens when your daughter goes from, you know, uh, you know, a little girl to a tween to a teen and we get to experience that. And Giselle is really certainly challenged. And, you know, I think that Giselle really wants to grow. I mean, Robert, again, has gotten set in his ways. You know, he's fine living in New York City. Yes, their apartment's a little cramped, but things have changed. And I think Giselle 
really takes it to heart. She wants things to be as special as they can be. So she realizes that she needs to change things in their family and moving to the suburbs and growing and living in a house and having something like organic growth happen. So Robert, I think what's great about him in this second movie is he's way more accepting of understanding that Giselle really has good intuition. Giselle really does have a great point of view and they bond over it and he's willing to support her in wanting to make this move. And I think it's great to see that this married couple has progressed, progressed, they are in love, and he's very supportive of what Giselle wants to do. Well, we're very fortunate in the development of the movie to think about a really great character that would be the new villain, because in the first movie, it's very hard to top Nerissa, played by Susan Sarandon, so we had to think about what would be the greatest challenge for Giselle moving to suburbia, and that is that mom that controls the town, who wants to remain in control of the town, and what would happen to her if she was involved in a, in a fairy tale? How does she grow and change? So Malvina's character is, is a real challenge to Giselle, and Maya Rudolph was like such a phenomenal addition to this movie, because in Disenchanted, Maya Rudolph gets to really challenge uh, Giselle from day one. And then when Giselle makes her wish, well, then we get to see Malvina grow into a full witch, and then it's game on. Um, Patrick Dempsey, you know, again, like he's progressed from the first movie uh, in Robert's character, but you know, he's embraced Giselle completely. He wants everything to be as good for the family as possible. And so he's willing to make that leap and go into suburbia and take on a whole new reality. Um, it was so great to put this whole team of, of characters back together, but the growth that we have with having Yvette and having Jema you know, play these sidekicks to uh, Maya's character. Just, they, they play so well together. They're so organically uh, 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 a great team because they are both so, they're, all three of them are so good with um, improv comedy that they play so well as a unit throughout the movie. And each one of them individually has so many great moments for comedy in the movie. You know, I just want to say that, uh, you know, Megan and Schwartz did such a great job with the music on this movie. Um, and I think that it was such a great opportunity to see Adina Menzel be able to sing um, and see her character, you know, come to life through love power when uh, Jimmy and, and Adina bring the wand. It's so great to watch them uh, uh, play. Um, I think that the character of Giselle was a very relatable one. I think, you know, that Robert's character was very relatable to a lot of people who saw the movie, but I think mostly the movie really entertained on so many levels. Um, song and dance, the great music that Schwartz and Macon created for the first movie. Um, I think the fact that, you know, the music has been the thing that has always, you know, been recognized about Enchanted as being so special. And I think we had a really great story. I mean, Susan Sarandon was terrific. I mean, Patrick and Amy were amazing. Um, I think that, you know, what James Marsden did with The Prince was wonderful. And I think we were very fortunate to have Adina in that first movie, see her character grow so much. And, you know, I think that's why there was a great uh, need for a, for a sequel to see what happened to these characters. Where did they go? How did they grow? So, you know, at the end of Enchanted, Jimmy and Adina just disappear into a manhole and where are they? What are they doing? What's happening in Andalasia? So in the sequel, we really wanted to bring Andalasia to the forefront, which is why so much happens in the middle of the movie in Andalasia. Well, you know, it's a hard job to step into the, you know, midway development of a movie uh, and sort of be able to shape it. And so Adam brought Richard Legravenez onto the project, who was a great writer and, and phenomenal credits and, and the ability for uh, the three of us to meet and talk and try to shape what the future of the movie would be was just a great opportunity. Adam Shankman's the perfect director for Disenchanted because he brings with him a rich history of understanding comedy, dance, music, and Disney. So he was able to fully envelop the movie with all of his skills and talents to develop it from script to screen and I watched Adam work. Just for example, when we first got to Ireland for seven weeks, just doing the choreography, focused 100%, working before that with Megan and Schwartz on all the music and seeing how 
the music would progress character and concept so well. So for us, it was remarkable to watch Adam put all of those pieces together. I would go sometimes to rehearsals and watch Adam work and it was remarkable whether he was choreographing two dancers, one dancer or 150 dancers. He had so much focus and so much ability and he knew when things were right, things needed to be better and he was always shaping and reshaping and, and always willing to break it apart and put it back together again. Adam was the perfect director for this movie. You know, it is remarkable to, when you start developing a movie and you go from script to now the practicality of having to make the movie work. So we were very fortunate to bring onto the movie Dan Henna, who's a brilliant uh, production designer. And when Dan and Adam would first talk, we would say, wouldn't it be great if we could find this special town and we didn't have to build it? And maybe we could use some of that um, building on other things and, and, and really focus our resources. So we searched and searched high and low when we were very fortunate to be shooting in Ireland. In Ireland, the backdrop of the country was so the right backdrop for Disenchanted. But we were very lucky to find this little town called Enniskerry. And Enniskerry became our town. And it was our town that they first drive into and it's our town that transforms into the fairy tale town uh, of Monroeville. So Monroeville is our town that we start with and Monrelasia is the town that it becomes. And we were very lucky to find this great little town called Enniskerry in Ireland that's not far from Dublin. And the town just was the perfect sort of town to have the movie work within. It wasn't a square, it was a circle, it wasn't flat, it had hills, it had some beautiful period buildings that looked like a Disney fairy tale. And as a matter of fact, all around it are these historical buildings and gardens that just speak to, you know, what this movie is. So we are very fortunate to find the town of Enniskerry.